I'm Mark Dresner, and welcome to DDP TV, a special executive interview series featuring experts and leaders at the forefront of drug delivery today. Joining me today is Cornell Stammeren. He's Vice President of Corporate Development and Strategy at Catalent Pharma Solutions. Cornell, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Let's talk about the future and the present, if you will, of drug, de drug delivery today. Um, what ongoing issues and challenges are you facing based on uh, the industry's current trajectory? And if you would, um, tell us a little bit about your background before going into that. Um, I've um, uh, been in the industry for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. I joined the uh, former RP Shearer in 1992 and um, through two leveraged buyouts, one IPO, uh, one getting bought, one getting sold, um, have been with that company and today we're the world's largest drug delivery company. So, um, so as Catalan, so that's, that's background. That's quite a ride. So, um, it's, it, it really demonstrates that how much value there is in drug delivery, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that so many people want a, want a piece of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and and Catalan yes. is a, a, a platform, a technology, a Ca platform technology. Ca right? Catalan is a, is a technology company. We mm -hmm. are not a specialty pharma as mm -hmm. so many drug delivery companies have have um, become. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're a provider of uh, development solutions and advanced delivery technology. So that's in a, roughly about 80% of our revenue comes from the delivery technology area. So. And proof of the value of technology yep. companies, uh, despite some people who might have predicted uh, otherwise yep. in the past. We like being an exception. Yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, um, so going back, sure. you know, based sure. on your background and your experience, two decades sure. here. I, you know, clearly one of the things that has changed the most is um, how uh, our customers are using technology. Mm. Um, uh, very much in the 90s and perhaps the early 2000s, um, companies were using advanced technologies as line extension plays mm -hmm. more so. So, um, uh, so uh, develop a new version of an existing drug um, and um, that's bioequivalent, that has basically the same claims, the same patient outcomes, mm -hmm. um, and either launch it alongside the first generation or replace the first generation with it um, and um, get the benefit of um, extending patent lives and things like that. Um, with, the, with the fundamental shifts in the market um, in Europe coming from um, the single payer markets mm -hmm. in the U.S. coming from uh, really around Medicare a Modernization Act in 2003, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, the um, ex ex exponential almost growth in, in generic share in the market, um, that business model of simply replacing an old form with a new form that's otherwise clinically equivalent mm -hmm. um, doesn't get reimbursed anymore. It mm -hmm. doesn't gain. It can gain gain market share certainly if it's an OTC conversion, or other things. But that fundamental use of technology as a patent arbitrage strategy, mm -hmm. um, it, it 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 works very rarely, if at all, anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so um, so the, those people with t with technology platforms that had. Um, novel clinical application that they could really change treatments mm -hmm. um, are, are, are doing well. Um, compounds that didn't aren't. Okay. So, so pretty big so. shift there, pretty big shift. I want to I wanna touch on another shift that, that, uh, that you mentioned because I really liked this phrase and that was payer power. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about payer power. So uh, a, friend, a friend of mine talks about when you change who pays, everything else changes. Mm -hmm. And in this case, um, um, you know, again, uh, coming from the European single payer changes, the NICE system in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence um, in the US uh, on the private side, um, it's, it's harder to get drugs reimbursed or to gain market access than ever before. Mm -hmm. And really most payers are looking for drugs that are clinically better clinically different, mm -hmm. at least, and clinically better, ideally, for patients than, pr than current versions, when 80% of most developed markets share is generic, um, um, achieving that 
from an innovator standpoint often requires um, uh, interventions from different, uh, different drug design elements, including drug delivery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. To what extent uh, would you say that drug delivery now is playing a role in that, in that shift in helping companies uh, really uh, create standout products that do get reimbursed? in that environment? Um, I think it's playing more of a role. Certainly more compounds coming out of uh, discovery mm -hmm. need um, enabling technology just to be able to reach the market mm -hmm. uh, because of poor absorption and other issues. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly our own experience, we've, we've touched more than half of the new products approved in the U.S. in the last eight years. Um, but it's not uh, there's still a lot of room for um, product improvement mm -hmm. by better using technologies to to optimize the patient outcome, rather than just to get the dr get the drugs delivered. Mm -hmm. um, so our our own assessment is six of ten drugs over the uh, approved over the last four years could benefit. Um, by better using technology to improve the patient outcome. Mm -hmm. so. Huge shift there on outcomes. Let me ask you one last quick question. That is, does that mean that we can expect to see drug delivery involved earlier in the R&D process than it is currently? Um, we believe it needs to be, and mm -hmm. we are uh, definitely um, working to do that. Um, we also have many people in medicinal chemistry and the pharma industry side also saying that um, patient design characteristics, uh, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, mm -hmm. um, optimization needs to be um, considered earlier um, in deciding which targets progress to, um, to development. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it will happen solely. Excellent so. insight, excellent insight. Cornell Stammer, thank you very much for joining us today. And that concludes this episode of DDP-TV. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Dresner.